Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because I thought today we'd just do a, a fantastic little painting I think you'll enjoy. So let's start out and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got going up here today. And today I've got, <laughs> I've got all three of the mediums being used on this one canvas here. We have in the top here I put a mixture of liquid white and liquid clear because I want to have some transparency in this. If you don't have the clear, you can just use white. Uh, down here, I put the liquid black, and I've just taken a brush and sort of stirred it up a little bit. And that's basically all that we've done. And with that, if everything goes well, we'll just do a fantastic little painting. Let's start out today with a touch of the yellow ochre, just a little bit of yellow ochre. Don't need much on the two-inch brush. And let's go right up in here. And we'll just put in a little, just a little thing like so. There we are. There, okay. Now I'm going to add at least a little touch of cad yellow to the brush so it gets a little bit brighter. And I'm going to come back in a minute and put white in there and brighten that center up even more. There. Just want nice yellow color in here. Like that. And I'm just using little crisscross strokes. There we are. Now, without cleaning the brush, I'm going to touch a little yellow ochre and dark sienna. So I have a nice brownish yellow color, yellow brown color, whatever you want to call it, but a little bit of each. And we'll come right in here. Still using the little, the little crisscross strokes. Like so. Get a little more of the paint. And we'll go on the other side and do the same thing. I like these little paintings where it looks like the sun's glowing through from the back. They're very nice and very easy to do with some of these mediums that we have. A little more of the dark sienna. I want it to get progressively darker as it works away from the light. Progressively darker. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to begin adding the least little touch of Van Dyke Brown. Not much, just a little just a little so it gets a little darker and then it's going to pick up the liquid black it's already here and automatically it's going to get darker let these mediums work for you let them work for you all right okay now then let me just pick up a clean brush i've got several of each brush going and let's go up in here and just blend this together Really want to blend it together. There. And let these colors just go right to each other. And the, the transition between colors then will be very smooth, very gentle. They won't distract the eye. Sort of looks like a big old egg I fried the other morning. <laughs> I'm not much of a cook. There. Okay. Now then, time to clean a brush. And that's the fun part of this. That's the fun part. <laughs> there we go. Now then, I'm gonna take that same old brush and go right into some titanium white. And we don't need much, just a little on the brush. Start here and begin working around and around and around and around. We want this to be the brightest spot in the sky. Just, just work it and blend it. Let it, let it work outward. But don't go back into the center with a dirty brush. You'll lose that nice glow. And we want to save that. You could even take a little paint on your finger if you wanted to and make the indication. Maybe there's a little sun up there. Who knows? Who knows? And then very lightly, very lightly, you can just blend it all together. But it will give you the impression that there's a little sun up in the sky. All right. Now then, today, as I say, let's just have some fun and enjoy and let our imagination take us to some beautiful places and see what happens. <laughs> we got the brush clean. That's the most important part of it. Now then, let's take, let's take some dark sienna. I'll pick up a little of the titanium white. Maybe put a little black in there with it. There we go. I'll make sort of a, sort of a gray with a little brown in it. Oh, it's getting nice there. It's getting nice. Just sort of work it back and forth to you. Find the flavor that you like. 
there. There we go. Let's try that. We'll have a fan brush. This is a number six fan brush, or you could use number three or whatever. It's up to you. Color on the brush, both sides. We go up here. And I want this to be like little distant trees back in here. Let me add a little more white. It's a little brighter than I wanted it to be. I want it to be a little more subdued. Oh, that's much better. Much better. I'm happier about that. There, maybe there's some little little trees that live back in there. And all I'm doing is touching with a fan brush and sort of pulling downward. Just pulling downward, very gently. See, this is a super way of making a lot of trees very rapidly, or the indication of a lot of trees. There. Just sort of let it taper right on off into nothing. Now then, take a clean, dry, two-inch brush, and just want to tap the base of this to create that illusion of mist. A lot of mist. And very lightly, very lightly, lift upward. Just upward. Okay, go back to the same brush, same old brush, and I want it to be just a little bit darker, so just load the brush up again. Same colors, just a little darker. Now then, maybe in our world there lives, yep, you're right, another little layer here. And this is, this helps create that illusion of depth in your painting, distance. There, maybe it comes right on down like that. On up here somewhere, we don't even know where it goes. There. And once again, back to the two inch brush, and I want to tap the base of that to help create that illusion of mist. Just tap it, let it just disappear. Okay, and very lightly, two hairs and some air, just lift it upward. But look at the amount of distance we've created in that, just by playing with a little color. All right, let me clean off a spot to work here. So we'll lay that over there out of the way. Might need it later. Let's go into a little bit of the black, a little Van Dyke, dark sienna. And I'll put just a little bit of white in it, not much. I want this to be quite a bit darker, maybe a little more of the white. There we go. There. Makes a very nice color. But it's sort of toward the dark sienna color. That's what we're sort of looking for. Hey, you what? Oops, let me get a bigger fan brush. It goes a little faster picked up the number three, and I think I'll use the number six. Number three would work just as well. There. Just that I want to go a little bit faster. So we'll use this one, and we'll drop in indication here and there of some happy little evergreen trees. These are closer, so you see a lot more detail. See how that darker color stands out against that light? Mm. Just sparkles. Just sparkles. Maybe, maybe there's some little indications. I don't know. Maybe they come right on down like that. See a few more little indications behind those trees. There, another one. We see some detail in. Okay. Let's have a few on the other side too. I don't want that side left out. Maybe, shoot, maybe there's a big one right there. But the same way, use a corner of the brush as you work down the tree. Push harder and harder just to add more pressure. Make the bristles bend down much more. Look at that. Look at that. You can do that. There we go. Have another one. Shoot, we're just painting a whole forest here. And that's all right. That's all right. Put as many or as few in your world as you want. Because painting is very individual. Everybody, everybody's going to see this differently. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. There. Okay, maybe. I know, let's have one more over here. We'll have one more of them little devils. Right on out. Now, sometimes it's interesting to show different depths. Maybe I'll add more black to that. Maybe back in here. 
you can see a few more back in there. Just let them sort of fade in there. Well, we really do have a forest, don't we? Now, once again, two-inch brush. I want to create that illusion of mist. Now, oh, let me show you a trick. Let me show you a trick. Let me show you. Let me show you. Just, I saw some. I get excited sometimes. Please excuse me. Now, see here? If you want to take these trees right here and push them farther back. Let me put some mist, and we'll take, let's just strengthen this tree here a little bit because that mist is there. Watch here, watch here. Look at push that tree back. Just by doing that, that's a little trick that helps show distance in a painting. That misty area is so important. Now when we create the mist here, we don't want to destroy that edge. We just want to tap in here. And just sort of let them blend together. Look at there though. But look at the layers in there now. And when you're doing your painting, Look at these things. Pick them out. Make them work for you. Shoot. But they're lazy. If you don't, if you don't find them and force them a little bit, they'll just lay there and sleep. Like me when the alarm clock goes off in the morning. There. Same thing over here. We'll just let that blend right in. Just about nothing. In fact, I'll put a little color on the brush. Maybe there's, maybe there's a big tree that lives right here. I don't know. Some nice little bushy things back in here. Add a little bit more of the dark color. There. But see, each layer gets darker, and look at the amount of distance in this little painting already. There's so many planes in there. And these little planes are what create that illusion. And they're really not hard to do. Really not hard to do. There. Just work on one level at a time, though. And sometimes we get in a hurry because it <laughs> it starts to work real well and it feels good and we just want to, oh, you know what I'm saying. We get carried away. And I bet it's happened to you if you painted. It certainly happens to me. I start seeing all these different things and next thing I know I'm out in left field somewhere. There. We'll put one here, too. What the heck? Maybe, 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 there I go with that maybe again. Maybe we have, yep, maybe there's a little bush lives right there. Right there. See, you just, you see these things and you drop them in. All right. Okay. Now then, we can take our knife and just sort of make the indication here and there of some little trunks. I don't want these to be too distinct too far away, and too subdued. But you can see a few little things here and there. And we can take that same old brush that has a color, and I'm going to add the least little touch of maybe some yellow ochre and a little bright red to it. Least little touch. I don't want much color on the brush. Very small amount. And I just, here and there, I want to pop in a little of that color to make it look like there's a little highlight on some of these. But it's real easy to overdo here. Too much will distract and you'll lose that softness. And that's one of the things that's so great about using a liquid black. That liquid black will always make things look very misty, very soft, because it grays color. It adds a gray color. Let's see here. Find my old brush. We'll just use the same old brush. What the heck? I'm gonna go right into a little touch of the yellow ochre, all the yellows, Indian yellow. Be right back, don't go away. Get a little white. Whew. Oh, that's nice. I want a bright one right here. If our sun's right there and it's shining down, look at there. I want a sparkler. The light's going to strike that. And it's really going to be pretty. There we go. But look at all those beautiful little colors. Maybe right there. Put a nice little red color in there and let it just work its way back. Just using the corner of the brush, that's all you need. It's really all you need. I want to take a little paint thinner and go into some Van Dyke Brown. Here and there, we'll put the indication of a little tree trunk. Some little sticks and twigs and all those little things that live in there. 
Maybe back here we can see some things. Old dead tree, maybe. Wherever. Wherever. There's one. Mm. That's an old crookedy one. That one's a crooked. Okay. Tell you what, let's do. Let's get crazy here. Let's get crazy and have some fun. Maybe there's a little house that's here. You know me. I like little houses and big trees. That's that's my thing. Now, if you don't want a house in yours, don't put it in. Every once in a while I get a letter from somebody that said, I didn't want a house in that painting. And you have that right. When you do yours, do it any way that you want it. There. We get a lot of letters from people all over the country who are, who are painting and doing fantastic things. The photographs that people send me, sometimes they're, it's almost unreal that people are doing such beautiful paintings. And every so often we like to put them together and show them here. So send me a photograph of what you're doing. Share it with us and, and we'll share it with the TV audience and let everybody see it. If you don't mind, if you don't want it shown on TV, if you send a picture, just, just say so. We'll respect that. There. Let's go right here. And we can just use a little bit of this brown and sort of decide where we want everything to live. Touch, through, pull. All we're doing, blocking in color. Get some dark on there so our light will show. Maybe it comes down like, maybe, it, maybe it's got a longer roof on the other side, see? Some old houses are like that. Just like so. There. And while we have that brown there, we can just block in some sides and front. Maybe this, maybe this is a, I don't know what kind of building this is. Maybe it's an old barn. You decide. You could make it a little house or a barn or whatever. Whatever. Now, we'll take some white, a little bit of that brown color, and just mix it together. There we are. Something like so. Cut us off a little roll of paint about that. Touch. See? Just go down like that. But you got to make that little noise or it doesn't work. And our light's coming from here. So that'll be the brightest side. Same color. I'll add a little dark sand and Van Dyke brown to it. Same color, though. Same color. There I go with that noise again. Really, for some reason, uh, maybe it's the exhaling of air or something, but it's, it really does seem to make it work a little better. There. Very gently. Create the illusion of an old building. Now then, in our old building, let's have some boards. We'll take some Van Dyke brown here, just a small roll, and just touch. Just touch. See there? Create the illusion of some boards. One a few on this side. There they are. There they are. Do, 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 do. Let them go. Let them go. Well, we're going to have one neat building here in a minute. We'll take our two-inch brush and only one hair and some air. Just barely caress. Barely. Just barely. Whoa. Just barely touch it. If you want to smooth it out. You may like it a little rougher. I want to smooth this one out a little bit, though. So it's up to you. I'm going to take the little knife. I like that little knife. And let's put a door in here. Maybe I'll just put a big old door like that. And we'll let everybody figure out what their own building is. See a little light right there? Around, two. There we are. For the roof, for the roof, we'll take some white, a little bit of brown, maybe the least little touch of black in there. Oh, yeah, graze it down some more. But don't overmix it. I want a lot of things happening right there on the knife. And we touch. And this is where, if you're a little nervous, it'll pay great dividends. Just touch, bloop, 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 bloop. let it work its way down. There I go with those noises again. There. See? Now just a, a tiny little bit on the other side, just so there's a little light zinging through there. Shoot, we got a pretty nice looking little building there. We can live with that. Take a little dark color. 
Oh, you do some black and some brown, a little lizard and crimson in there too. Let's come right along in here, touch, and let's begin thinking about how the land's going to flow around this little building. How do we want it to go? And this is where we cut it off and get our perspective right. There. Okay, that's about all we need because we got the black there. Maybe on the other side, something comes down. Yeah, that's good. Let's put that right there. I'm beginning to see some things in here. All right. Tell you what, tell you what. Let me find, yeah, we'll use a one inch brush today. We'll be different. Take a little sap green, a little yellow, a little, a little yellow ochre. Be right back, get a little black in there too. There, it's nice. A little Indian yellow. And put a little red in there. Red dulls it because red and green, as you know, makes brown. And maybe in our world, maybe there's some happy little bushes that live right along here. And I'm just pushing upward with the side of the brush. Just pushing upward. Want to make like tall grass here. Whew. Maybe. Let me find a little knife again. Tell you what, maybe there's a nice stone lives right there. We can do it with a knife or you can do it with a do it with a filbert brush. That's very nice too. Just touch. Just make the indication of a just a happy little stone. There we go. Little grassy thing that comes down, pushes that stone right into there. There we go. Just keep pushing. Like so. There. few little things over here, wherever, wherever, wherever. We have to have a path in there. There's just no getting around it. Have to have a path. Let me take a little of Van Dyke Dark Sienna. Let's have a little path that comes right down there. Right there. And once we get down here, we got to have, let's go back here. There it comes. We'll have another little path there. So he can walk down here and walk on out wherever he wants to go. A little white, a little touch of blue here and there too, just to gray it down. A little, at least a little touch of, oh, that's nice. It gives it a little cool flavor. A little cool flavor. There we go. Then we can just bring some of these little grassy things right up to the path, and that'll push it back down in there and make it all part of the painting. Make it work. And this is just using the side of the brush. Let's put a few on the other side. So you just push upward, just bend it, bend it. There. And work in layers, doing the thing as farthest away first and always coming forward. Always coming forward, forward, forward. There we go. Create the illusion of a little hill there. Let me find another fan brush. You ready to get crazy? Let's do it. Let's go into, into, we use Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sienna. Let's go up here. Maybe in our world. Yeah, you guessed it. Here comes Bob's big tree. Right there. Right there. Let's give him a friend. There's one. Mm. Let these old trees wiggle and jiggle and have character. Maybe there's a one back here in the back somewhere. He lives right back in there, stops there. He's got a little friend over here. Just make out some little indications. Whatever, whatever. Now then, let me find the liner brush. There it is. These brushes, if you don't watch them, they'll sneak off and hide on you, leave you by yourself. And we have a few limbs hanging right here. There's one. Old limbs hanging out here watching the sunshine. Let's put some leaves up there. Let's have some fun. We'll just use a little brown and black. At least a little touch of the blue. Not much. And let's just come right in here. Just use the corner of the brush. Maybe we'll let this old tree just hang right out here by the sun. Right out by the sun. Mm. Look at there. Look at there. Mm. Isn't that nice? 
that is nice. All right, we'll leave this one branch hanging. I like him out there by himself. See, you pick out little favorites and you leave them. You paint something nice in your painting. Be careful, save it. Shoot, work around it sometime if you can. No use messing up the good stuff. We'll take a little highlight color. See if that shows up. Yeah, it's enough. And we'll just put an indication here and there. A few little leaves up there. There we go. There. Just the corner of the brush. Pay attention to shape and form. I know you've heard that before. Even sometimes in the newsletter that we publish, I'll put little articles in there about shape and form and how to create them. There. And that gives me a little more time. In the newsletter, I can talk about things a little more and show because I don't have the time restraints that we have here. There we go. Down at the bottom here, put a little grass around his foot so we want that to just settle right in there. Okay, and we could take a little bit of light color on the fan brush. If you want to highlight the edge of this tree so it stands out, just a little bit of light really makes these old trees look a little better. Shoot, I think we about, about have a finished painting. You could scratch in a few little sticks and twigs wherever you want them, and it'd be done. I think we'll call that one finished then. So, tell you what, from all of us here, Happy painting, and God bless, my friend.